वेलकम टू चैप्टर वन इंट्रोडक्शन टू रिसर्च पार्ट वन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन फॉलोइंग कंटेक्स विद रेस्पेक्ट टू दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू रिसर्च द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ गेटिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन वॉट इज रिसर्च विल बी डिफाइनिंग द टर्म रिसर्च द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ रिसर्च मोटिवेशन बिहाइंड डूइंग अ रिसर्च वट वट वी मीन बाई द टर्म रिसर्च इंक्वायरी importance of research and traditional research versus modern research now research is one of the major tool used in social science even it is used in management where it is mostly an applied research and sometimes there is a fundamental research element involved in case of say so for example like psychology or else in social science behavior so we have seen how people behave in certain conditions how they do react what kind of products they demand or they buy what kind of channels or the marketing channels they follow whether they they buy it from a kirana store or from an organized retail format or they prefer to go for something like an online channel so these are certain areas of interest for researchers who are basically conducting the research in the field of study for example if i take a retail chain into consideration now see, this particular retail chain has lot many number of stores across the world and they serve a million number of customers weekly customer orientation is at the top of the fundamental principle of this particular company its customer comes first so it's ultimately customer driven who determines the success of this particular company now this company says that in order to stay ahead in order to survive in this competitive market we need ultimately to satisfy our customers our consumers and we would like to understand our consumers better so what they do they continuously try to find out certain economic and demand forecasting techniques they apply by collecting some secondary data or what is secondary data data which are available maybe in the books journals which are not hardcore collection of data so those are secondary data so they try to do certain demand forecasting based on certain secondary data they continuously study the trends and the factors which are related to market change in terms of change in consumer psychology what kind of product they prefer why they shift are they loyal to a particular brand or something like consumer purchasing what is the frequency of purchase etc so they consider the stores to be a marketing research laboratory where customers are coming buying and they are also observing it says that to study our customers when they come to our store how often they come what they buy what they normally prefers to buy in the sense do they repeat purchasing the same particular brand or not so we require to track them at what time they come what is their frequency of visit and what they buy fundamental to this observation is also they use some scanner information at a point of sale and and loyalty cards so even they apply like few customers who are loyal to them they do a focus group kind of a thing focus group is basically all people coming together few people coming together and discuss on certain points well whether the researcher tries to get certain insight from it or else they also have certain observational approaches are done that how a customer behave in a particular store now if you take all these points into consideration we find that basically the the retailer is looking forward for certain information because information reduces uncertainty in order to do a research it is very very important that you get updated information because once you get information related to whatever topic you are working on it reduces uncertainty in your decision making now why a company normally look forward for information they look forward for information to understand the environment of the market the kind of competition they have the customer needs the change in taste and preferences so this always helps in taking certain decision making now managers do not need more information 
they require quality information which will help them in making certain research decisions. Now, if I come back to what is the what is research, the definition says that research is a process which involves the, st the steps like defining the problem. So what is the research problem? Identifying the research objective in order to cater to that particular problem, formulating certain hypothesis, facts, collecting and interpretation of the data, that you can to collect data and interpret the data which you have already have collected and certain findings, deriving findings and conclusion and then identifying certain action plans. So once you collect data, you interpret those data, you do certain statistical analysis and finally you conclude. So that is what is important. So first and the foremost step, like defining the problem becomes very, very important. Now what do we mean by defining the problem? Now, let's take an example. Now, there is a store who observed that the sales of one of a particular product which they have in their store, mostly used by elderly people, the senior citizens, are going down. The company tried to find out what is the major reason why the sales are falling. Almost there is nothing wrong with that particular product. But they went to all possible distribution chains and they tried to find out what is the major reason. And they found that the product positioning of this particular product was slightly at a higher level. So what happened? Elderly people who had problems in their, which normally they have, their problem in their legs, back or knees, they were avoiding to stretch themselves up to take the product from the top shelf. So there was a problem with respect to the visual merchandising of the store and the strategic product placement. Because if the product was catering to elderly and senior citizens, you cannot keep the product at the top shelf. So one has to understand that the research problem can be the problem relating to a particular research. So first and foremost, you have to identify what is the problem. You also have to understand where from the problem is arising. And it only you can look forward to find out certain suggestion with respect to how you cater to such kind of a problem. So next comes is defining the research. Now research is defined as a systematic because it's planned. It has certain steps, the steps which we have said. It talks from problem identification to fixing of the objective and the hypothesis. And thereafter you collect data, you interpret data, you do certain statistical analysis and finally you report. The inquiry is aimed at understanding a thing or a phenomenon or to solve a problem. That's what we said. Now, this is an important area. Now, when the inquiry or whatever the research which you are applying may or may not have a practical or commercial use, commercial use in the sense, in a real life scenario, say, for example, a retail store, when they apply such kind of technique, it's basically for a commercial use because their ultimate objective is to improve the sales. So when a research is not for commercial use, then we can term it as something like a fundamental or a basic research. On the other side, if your research has a clear commercial use, that means you are going to put this particular research into certain commercial purposes in order to solve a particular problem faced by a particular company in real practice, then it is said to be an applied research. So research can also be a scientific research or a management research, which we are going to discuss henceforth. The next thing comes is what is the objective of doing the research or rather the objective of the research. The first point says to become familiar with certain mechanism or phenomenon or to gain new insight into it. Now what it means, a new insight. I'll just give an example of a, the political parties. Now before any parliamentary election, political parties also do conduct certain research. Priorities the research priorities is on basically on the voters so as to prepare their election promotional plan. So they get certain insight about what is the current issues which are there in the mind of the voters, what they are looking forward, what their psychology with respect to their preference of which particular political party it might be and they frame such kind of strategies or tools such that they can counter that. To describe accurately the characteristics of a product or of, of a particular group or a product or a segment or a market situation or an industry. See, see like, like current times, 
tourism, hospitality industry? Is that a problem? So we require to understand the kind of segment we are in, the kind of problem, the economic problem we are in, the kind of environment we are in. We also have to understand the kind of customer groups we are targeting a particular product. Now, if you have if you have denoted a particular target with respect to certain customers, we targeting a particular customer group or segment means a cluster. So there are clusters of customers. There are different customers. You can make certain clusters with respect to their income, with respect to their age, a low income, high income group. With respect to age in the sense someone who is below 25, someone who is above 25 to 45 and someone who is beyond maybe 50. Different customer group has different type of preference, different type of choice. And they prefer to have different kind of products. So it just has to be very, very clear about the fact that when you are doing a particular research, to which particular customer group you are targeting, to which particular segment you are, what is the kind of market scenario you are in or the market situation you are in, or in which particular industry you are discussing. To identify the frequency with which one phenomenon occurs, or the cause of associated with that particular phenomenon. Now there can be a re there can be something like a stock out happened in a store. The more number, say like for example, since there was lockdown for few days, people started holding huge amount of pulses and cereals, which might result in certain stock outs. There is less amount of products in the store. You also have to understand the kind of uh, phenomenon we are in. If, say, for example, the kind of business recession which we are in right now. Check about the automobile industry. The purchase frequency or the cycle frequency with respect to purchasing that particular product is going down. Check out with the change in the management education which has happened. You are not able to go to classrooms and do classes. So there are certain virtual platforms which are coming up. So you also have to understand the phenomenon occurring or the cause associated with that particular phenomenon. To formulate and test a hypothesis, maybe to establish the relationship between say sales and market share or company satisfaction level. Now one has to understand what is an hypothesis. Now you say as per your research, that maybe advertisement has a direct relationship with respect to sales. So more the advertising budget is, so automatically there will be an impact on sales. It might be. That's your hypothesis. That's the fact that which you are planning, that you are thinking that, yeah, that's the real fact. But it may not be true. So you look at to prove your hypothesis that really that the advertising budget, if you increase your advertising budget to a certain extent, there will be an impact on the sales of the particular organization. It may or may not happen. So your hypothesis must be that, yeah, it might happen. The alternative hypothesis can be that, yes, it's not happening. So you require to test that. You just cannot say that advertising budget has a positive relationship with the overall revenue or sales of the organization. Now let's talk about motivation in research. Now in motivation in research, see, the point says the aspiration to drive consequent benefits due to the research. Now please understand the fact that to uh, derive the consequent benefit due to the research, see, uh, I'll just give an example. Now, there are many products which companies normally launch in the market. Now, once they launch the particular product in the market, they design the product with respect to certain marketing mix, be it a product, price, place, promotion. So the, uh, the product has to be available at all possible places. So they require to take into consideration the nature and the distribution channel. They also have to take into consideration other factors like promotion. They require to promote this particular product. I'll give you an example of maybe two products. One is Lux, another is Lifebuoy. Now, if you remember Lifebuoy, they came up with a positioning statement that Tandrushya ke raksha karta hai Lifebuoy, Lifebuoy hai jahan Tandrushya ke hawa. Now, what it means, if you remember when the advertisement came up in the year 1992, the focus was that few footballers playing football and once they have played the football, they are using a, a, a soap, which is almost a red color soap, which is a brick like structure. So the fact was that they were targeting a certain group of customers or profile of customers who are rough and tough. Now, this particular product was in great demand 
among a particular gender, male. But females, you will not find huge amount of demand for this particular product in for females. On the other side, if you talk about a product like Lux, they have positioned the product to such an extent they have endorsed so many female endorsers to currently all the major female endorsers which are there in the market right now in Bollywood. This particular product like Lux has been positioned as a feminine product. So Life Boy was positioned as a male product and Lux was positioned as a feminine product. But the fact is that company wants to increase their market. So they want to reposition this particular product. So what they did? Life Boy, which was predominantly a male product, they tried to bring new products in their product line with respect to hand wash and others such that they can capture the market. On the other side, Lux, if you remember, it was purely positioned as a feminine product. They came up something like Shah Rukh in a bathtub and tried to reposition themselves that it is also a male product. So I hope you have understood what I mean by saying that there are certain motivation behind doing a research and intention to face challenges in overcoming competition. There are companies, there are companies who are advertising, there are competitors who are advertising, there are competitors who are advertising against your products. Intention to apply research for a successful creativity. I'll talk of something like from the point of view of MI. MI coming up with smart washing machine. So we know washing machine as a product, but certain amount of creativity, innovation in that particular segment is absolutely essential. You talk from the point of view of mobile phone. Mobile phone from, from a normal OS phone to an Android phone. Now it has become a curved display. Now folding phones are coming. So there is a, so, so research is also happening in order to successfully create certain new product in the product category. Intention to integrate social marketing concepts. There are companies like Tata, PNG, Hindustan Unilever, Procter & Gamble who are doing social marketing concepts in the sense they're doing social works which are also associated with that particular company which creates a certain amount of respectability of the business houses. So I hope you have understood what the concept of motivation in research is all about. In the next class, we will move with respect to the systematic inquiry about the particular research and the rest of the point which will be discussed in part two. Till then, thank you. Have a nice day.